Today what we're going to be doing is fishing on Kincaid Lake on a beautiful summer day. Ooh, that's a good fish. We're going to be doing a little bit of a walkthrough of the Stinger 198 low boats and some of the things, the low boat, some of the things I've done to this rig to kind of set it up for crappie fishing. So Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing, partnered up with these fantastic companies. It is a crappie catching machine, the low boat. And obviously I've done a lot of little things. I've had it now for about a year. I feel like I can give a pretty good assessment of the 198. I've had a lot of uh, guide trips this year and everybody comments on the boat, how quiet the engine is, how wide the boat is. And I just want to share those experiences with you, kind of briefly go through. We're going to put some big slabs in the boat here on Kincaid Lake. Uh, and while we do that, I'm going to be talking to you about the, the Low Stinger 198. It's a great boat. Thanks for joining. Please subscribe. Ring that notification bell. Gosh, it doesn't get any better than this. Good fish here, folks. All right. Gotta let him go today, but that's a great fish. 12 inch crappie on uh, King K. Beautiful. Hmm. This tree's giving off a lot of small little fish. I've got some big ones here as well, but. Uh, having to fight through all the small ones is kind of difficult. That's a little bitty black nose, man. So, you want to give me my bait back? All right. So let's start and let's talk about the Loeb 198. First and foremost, as a crappie angler, that's the angle I'm going to be coming from. A lot of people think that uh, the low boats are bass boats, and and I just want you to know, as a crappie fisherman, and that's all I do. I don't do anything else. This boat right here has really served the greatest purpose, okay? I start off with the amount of pedestal seat holes that it has up front. It has three. This is great because when your partner and you are fishing up here, whether or not it's spider rigging or not, you can choose which three holes you like to use. Now, obviously, the two far ones make the most sense. Spider rigging equipment, ample room up here to actually do whatever it is that you need. This boat is wide. I believe the beam is 94 inches and it is what I like to call a fat pig, which is a great thing when you are a crappie fishing. You've got two compartments up front. I use this one here for Jinko baits. It's great. Um, anything that I'm gonna use for the day goes in that compartment. It's right underneath me. It's really accessible, which is very nice. You also have another compartment right here that I use for hooks, weights, any type of instrument that I need, needle nose, scissors, that type of stuff, go there. Does have a recess, that's very nice. Actually accommodates the cornfield crappie bridge mount incredibly well. You have a control panel up here which allows you to lower and, and raise your motor. And so everything up here at the helm, so to speak, is really at your fingertips, which is really great. I chose to do the power poles on mine. I have 10 foot power poles. Doesn't seem to slow it down whatsoever. Those are those buttons right there. I have a 115 Mercury on this boat and you can get a 150. The problem with the 150 in my personal opinion is that it's gonna cost you about five grand more because you're gonna have to get hydraulic steering and you're gonna gain roughly around eight miles an hour. So you have to decide for yourself whether or not that's worth it. I stuck with the 115. Top speed in this boat is 45 miles an hour. I can have a live well full, I can have a guide trip in the boat, 45 miles an hour is about as fast as it's going to go, which I think is perfect for crappie fishing. All right, folks, so it's great to be back on King K Lake. No minnows here, folks. This is all jigs, and it's just a fantastic lake that's definitely got the thump going right now. Good fish. Great fish. Crappie fishing's fantastic. Marry that up with the, the best boat in the in the world, in my opinion, right now. Uh, for crappie anglers, uh, it doesn't get any better than that. Fantastic fish right there. Let them go. All right, welcome to the back of the boat. Looking forward. 
Again, we've com already covered those two compartments up there. Now we're gonna talk about the console and the center beam, the widest part of the boat, 94 inches, I believe is what it is, okay? First and foremost, you have ample rod storage. Everything you could want is in there. It looks like you roughly have room for 10 rods, which is fantastic. And then on top of the deck, you actually have some tie downs on both sides that I put usually up to five rods, five rods probably at most on this side over here. And on this side, if I choose to put something there right now, there actually is a bass rod there. You can as well. You can easily put two, probably two rods on this side up to five, six. You could stack them if you wanted to, but they'd end up getting tangled up. But a lot of rod storage on this boat. Cup holders for your drinks. And then you have two massive openings right here. You can't go wrong, folks. This is crazy. Crazy amount of storage in this boat. Um, I got everything from clothing to fish fillet stuff to first aid, uh, you name it. It's in those compartments. Look at this pig. Wow. <laughs> Please subscribe, hit that notification bell. Facebook and Instagram are awesome places to see daily pictures from three pound fishing. Um, and if you're interested in any of these Ozark rods, go to OzarkRod.com. That's another great fish. Man, that is some good fishing. Unbelievable how great the fishing is. Now, as a crappie angler, I have a lot of electronics on the boat. I start off with my Helix 10, Generation 1, up at the console. Gives me great side imaging. A Generation 2 will also do you good as long as you have the mega imaging. Up front, I have a Helix 8 Generation 3 just for waypoints. That's all it does is waypoints. And then, of course, I have my live scope mounted on the Cornfield Crappie Gear bridge and telescope mount. That telescope mount goes from 20 to 30 inches, and it's fantastic. It's up there in my face. I don't have to bend over. I get a lot less glare because my shadow of my body is blocking the sun from actually hitting it. Now this boat has a, I believe it's a, oh, I'm kind of get, kind of have to guess on this, but I'll put the, the correct number on the screen. A large gas tank, roughly around 25 gallons. It's huge. You actually sit on top of it. So you sit a little bit higher than your typical bass boat, which I really like and it saves my knees. In the back is you have a storage bin for some, like a cooler. You have another one over here on the right side that can be used for baits. I use that for all my hair jigs or anything like that I'm gonna use. And also you have a massive live well. It's massive. And so that's awesome. Recirculates, it can bring the water in if you'd like. Does a lot of different things, so that's really nice. Now, I do have this thing rigged up with the power poles. I do have more controls up here at the console for those. Good fish here. Wow, good fish. Right there. Solid 12 and a half, 13 inch fish. Shake it off. Awesome fish right there. We are going to let them go today. So the back of the boat is made up of two compartments left and right, which house, one's a cooler. The, I think they're actually both a cooler and they house my baits and they also house my food. The large live well, like I said, it's about 50 gallons, ridiculously how big it is, which is really nice. So if you did choose to do bass fishing or cat fishing, which I don't recommend, I recommend completely cock fishing, but uh, it's great. Boats come standard with three batteries. I have, I think, five in the back there. There's ample room to store as many as six, to be quite honest with you. So that's good. That gives you room to expand on the boat. And I certainly have, with all the electronics and everything that's changed since I got this boat, it's important to have the ability to modify it to accommodate what the new technology is. And obviously, LiveScope's one of those things. So let's talk about price point. That's what I love about low boats. It's not the most expensive. 
and it's not the cheapest. Um, you get what you pay for, so to speak, and I think Low Boats is the perfect middle of the gra middle grade uh, in terms of craftsmanship, in terms of everything that's about the boat. And I love it, and I think that's perfect for a crappie fisherman. Um, you don't need a $60,000 boat to crappie fish. You just don't. And this fits that bill, in my opinion. It's right in the middle for um, the, the crappie angler. It really, truly is. Man, I keep getting bit, 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 bit. If I was a spider rigger, spider rigging, I'd be spider rigging this spot left and right. There is fish everywhere. Now, I do have a very active Facebook and Instagram page. Please do me a favor and swing over to Instagram page, Three Pound Fishing. Check it out. Take a little time here right now. Pause. Go to your, your, your browser on your computer and check out Instagram. Check out Facebook. I'm telling you, post on there almost every day. Uh, trying to keep that page very active, very up to date. Um, you know, I'll be post. I'll be posting these videos on YouTube probably once a week, and uh, those pages are every day. I mean, everything from little videos to pictures of what's going on. Ooh, that's a good fish. Ooh, easily the biggest fish of the day. That's a big fish. <laughs> That's flipping awesome. Check out that hog. Hey, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it, guys. The low stinger is an awesome, awesome boat. Check it out. Just like that slab is. That's a huge fish. That's got to be about a 16 inch fish. 16, 15 inch fish. Beautiful. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching another three pound fishing episode sponsored by these great companies.